I learned a long time ago that you can actually hear any fa uh, much faster than I can ever speak. In fact, you can hear 500 words per minute. Most people only speak about 225 words per minute. I, you go a little bit far faster than that. I have 275 words to play with. But help me out. Let's find out if you can actually listen as fast as you can hear, which means 500 words per minute, which I can't really get to, but I'm going to try my best, okay? So we're going to do a rigorous scientific experiment if you don't mind helping me out. Yes? Good. All right. Great. Thank you very much. We're going to play a game called Simon Says. If I say Simon Says in front of it, you go ahead and do it. It's very rigorous, I know, scientific. All you science majors are going, yeah, right, okay. But it's all right. So if I say Simon Says, you're going to do it. If I don't say Simon Says, please don't do that thing. I cannot see all of you, especially in the balcony. So I'm going to trust you to be honest. If you make a mistake, please sit down, relax, and just have a seat. All right? We're going to start now. So everybody, please stand up. Okay. So I did not say Simon Says, so you can sit back down. Now, who said that you didn't say Simon Says? Who's my tattletale? Yeah, big mouth over there. So I also didn't say tell everyone that I didn't say Simon Says, so you can stay seated too. Simon Says, please stand up. So if you already stood up the first time, you don't have to stand up this time. But if you really want to play again, go ahead. You can stand up again. I didn't say Simon Says. You can sit back down again. Yes, it's okay. All right, Simon Says, raise your right hand. All right, put it down. Very good. Uh, no, if you put it down, you can sit down. So this is harder than it looks, I guess, huh? I'm not even trying. Simon says, raise your left hand. You should have both hands up. Put them down. Simon, oh, why? Yeah, I'm sorry, sir. Put them down. No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yes, have a seat. Simon says, put them down. All right, so we're going to go a little bit faster and see if you can actually hear and listen as fast as I can speak, all right? Because that was actually slow. I was going easy on you. Simon says, raise your right hand. Simon says, put it down. Simon says, raise your left hand. Simon says, put it down. Put them both up. No, this, by the way, this is kind of like wanting to fly. It's okay, you should sit down. Yes, I appreciate that. Simon says, raise your right hand, put it down. Simon says, raise your left hand, put it down. You should have both hands up. If you don't have both hands up, have a seat. Good, put them down. Simon says, put them down. Simon says, raise your right hand. Why don't you give a wave to all those people that got out? Go ahead, give them a nice wave. Nobody's waving. You guys are getting good. Simon says, give them a wave. Yeah, you can give the princess wave too if you like. Stop, that's not nice. It's pretty rude. Why'd you stop? Yeah, if you stopped, you can have a seat. It's a yeah, very tiny wave. Simon says, put down your hand. All right. Simon says, put up your right hand. Put it down. Simon says, put up your left hand. Put it down. Simon says, put them both down. Simon says, put them both up. Put them both up. Simon says, put them both up. Simon says, put them both up. Whoa. We do have a few people left. For those that are left, you are all winners. Give yourself a round of applause. Wait, 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 wait. Simon says, didn't say applaud. So you're not the winners. Have a seat. Anyone left that did not clap for themselves? Wow, I'm the winner. It's okay. So I got to tell you about, uh, I, I do, Simon says, we have a little bit of an experiment. Now we know uh, that you maybe can't listen as fast as you can hear. But we're going to talk a little bit about some tips about how you can be a better listener. Because it's important to listen. It helps you, and it's going to change your life. It's going to change the people around you. Your life's going to change the world. It can if you listen. So Bert, first, we're talking about what you're doing. And all I asked you to do was listen. I didn't ask you. I should have told you to give me eye contact because people like to look down at the floor when they're doing Simon Says with me so they don't get mixed up by what I'm saying. But you should give good eye contact, right? So we're going to talk about five tips. One of them will be eye contact. But the first one is you need to stop. You need to stop talking and start listening. And that sounds obvious. But I don't mean just verbally, out loud, talking to people. I don't mean just talking over them when they're talking. But I mean also having the conversations in your head. And you know what I'm talking about. Like even now when I'm talking, you're like, oh, well, I can do it. I should have done better. Simon, why didn't I listen? So get rid of those conversations in your head. Another one is use your ears. And that sounds obvious. And use your eyes. Eyes would be the eye contact we talked about. But your ears also matter. I was walking across campus, across the quad. And a friend of mine I saw from about 20 yards away came out of the building to Barlow. And he starts walking towards me. And I noticed he has his earbuds in. And Alex made me feel really important. Because as we got closer, he also saw me. And we, we were approaching each other. He took the earbuds out. Not just one, but both. So he could talk to me and listen. And I know when I go for walks and I listen to books on tape and someone comes up to me and says, hi, I only take out one. Can I help you? Oh, yeah, directions over there. And I'm still listening to what's in my ear. Take out both earbuds and actually listen, right? Totally listen. Use your ears and your eyes. But you also need to give feedback. You guys gave me feedback. I heard some laughter. I heard some, some giggles. I heard some, oh, man, how did I mess up, right? And you raised your hand and you put it down. You put up both hands. Those are all feedback to me that you were listening, and I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Provide feedback. Meaning them where they are, I got to tell you, I, ha I coach volleyball. I coach 12-year-old volleyball. My 12-year-old daughter's up there in the balcony, so she'll attest to it. And I have a girl on my team. Her name is Bree. 
She's about this tall. Now, the rest of my girls, my daughter included, are like this tall. Bree is very tiny. And she's only seven years old. She's playing five years above her grade level or her age level. So when she plays volleyball, it's great because she doesn't listen at all. In fact, in practice, I can't get her to listen at all. Bree will be as likely to be paying attention and ready to go when the whistle blows as doing cartwheels in the back row of the court, even during a tournament. But Bree had a four-year-old, it's the son of one of the other coaches, come over during practice. It's during my practice, I don't mind. He runs over to tell her something. And Bree, my seven-year-old, who never listens to anything I say, does this. Takes his hand and actually listens to him, totally. She's being, she was, and she was being, and is fully present and meeting him where he was. And then he got finished, she said something to him, he ran off. And then she came back and did two more cartwheels. But that's Bree, and I know that's, that's what I have to deal with. So the first part of listening, becoming a better listener, is very simple. Focus on what you're doing. Focus on listening. Easy, right? Focus on what you're doing. If you only focus on what you're doing, if you only focus on listening when people talk to you, you will be able to give them a gift. It's the gift of respect. And we all want that, and we all deserve that, hopefully. All right. But we can go further. Not only focusing on what you do, how about if we focus on how we listen? So I gave you some tips on maybe how to do it better, but the real thing about listening on how you do it or focusing on how you listen is to listen with an open mind. Now, all of you are attending a TEDx event. So I assume you came to this and every other presentation, six before me, right, with an open mind. Because what good is it to come to something like this where you can learn or go to a university or college or go to any kind of presentation where someone's trying to give you new ideas, and that's what TEDx is all about, if you had a closed mind and didn't want to listen and learn. So I assume you already have an open mind, and then I expect it. But let's go further. That's what you do, listen, how you do it with an open mind. But the most important facet you can do is why you listen. And I'm going to challenge you and say that maybe what we should be doing is listening with an open heart. So I have a friend, Alice. She's over 90 years old. Her health has been deteriorating constantly. And at the point she's at now, she's bedridden, frail, losing a lot of weight. And her memory isn't that great. She forgets things. She forgets what she told you yesterday. She forgets what she told you five minutes ago. So I went to visit her a little while back on a work day. By myself, usually my wife and my daughter and I go. But I went by myself to visit Alice. And we had a nice conversation. But halfway through the conversation, she was like, can you take me to see my parents? I said, what? She goes, take me home. I want to be with my mom and dad. Can you take me home? And I said, no, I can't. Uh, They won't let you out of the bed. They won't let you. You're not ready yet. Well, I really want to go see them. Can't you take me? No. Now, first of all, she's 90 plus years old. Her parents died over 20 years ago. But she forgets that. She forgets a lot of the things we talk about over and over again. But I'm able to listen to her, right? So at the end of this conversation, she said to me, oh, I told her I had to go. I had to go back to work. I've been there. And that's a great excuse. I can get back to work, so I have to break my conversation. She says, well, okay, fine. Give me a kiss goodbye. That's all right. I always give her a kiss goodbye. I give her a kiss hello. So I gave her a kiss goodbye in the cheek. And Alice might forget stuff, but she's not losing all her capacity. She's quite clever still. She smiles at me and says, now you got to take me to my mom and dad. I said, no, Alice, I told you I can't take you. And she said, no, 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 you have to take me. I said, why? She goes, to make it legal. I looked at Alice and said, what are we making legal? She looked at me and said, anything you want. I was like, okay, Alice, thanks. Uh, I'm not going to tell my wife that one. And so I, I found a way. I got out of there. So it was okay. But listening to Alice with an open heart, meaning that I was listening to Alice because I loved her, was easy because I already loved her. But I needed more. I coached that 12-year-old volleyball team. It starts, unfortunately, way back in November, and it's still going on today. And I will admit, I will confess, about two months ago, I got burnt out. And I was, I was like, I don't want to coach anymore. The kids aren't, they're tired too. Let's, let's call the season. I can't do that, of course, right? You just can't stop in the middle of the season. But I really wanted to. And so I said, well, how can I get myself reinvigorated? So I thought about what I was doing. I was coaching. It was great. I love coaching. It's fun. Yeah, that didn't do it for me. It didn't get me reinvigorated enough. I said, how about how I coach? I went and changed 
my coaching tactics and practices. I changed the drills we did. I did more competition. We did more three on three. We did fun stuff. And the girls were like, yeah, this is fun. And they liked it for a while. And then that got boring to a degree. And unfortunately, it did nothing for me. I was still burned out. So finally, I said, you know, I have to focus on the why. I have to focus on why I'm coaching in the first place. And so I did. I thought, wow, you know why I'm coaching is because I love coaching. I love helping the girls become better players. I love helping them become better people. And that really did. That helped me. That invigorated me and got me going. So a month later, I got burnt out. So I'm still not fully engaged, and I can't figure out what's going on. I figured, how can I do this? And then, you know, something came to me. And I said, I don't have to stick with that why. I can give myself a new why. What if I coached the girls? What if I listened to them, worked with them, spoke to them? Everything I did was with a single purpose, to love them. So I gave it a try. And I coached that way. And I've been talking that way to them. And you, now it would be great if I tell you that, yes, it worked great. The girls played better. They won every tournament they played in. They listened to me. They focused. They didn't and Bree stopped doing cartwheels. No, none of that's true. It did not change my girls, not even a little bit. But it did change me. I changed. And I thought, this is great. I want to do this all the time. I can't do it all the time. It will burn you out. Listening even a little bit with that much focus and concentration will burn you out, right? It's, it's just like the burnout I was trying to avoid. You can't listen that way all the time, but we can do it from time to time, and we should spend more time doing it. So if you want to give the gift of respect, you just have to listen. If you want to give the gift of kindness and compassion, you have to listen with an open heart, I mean an open mind. If you want to give the gift of love, you need to listen with an open heart. So do it with the purpose to love. So here's the thought. What, what would your relationships, what would your interactions day-to-day -day be like if you did more than what was required, do more than removing the earbuds from your ear? What would your relationships as a son, a daughter, a father, a mother, a worker, a boss, what would that relationship be like if you did more than what was expected and listened with an open mind. What if time to time, throughout your busy lives, you invested the time and energy to give the gift of love? What would the world be like if you truly dared to truly listen with an open heart? Thank you.